And so, how do we design this shape here in a, such a way that it will always sit right above this cylinder? Well, let me show you a trick or two. All right. So, please observe, of course, we are now on this one here. Just to help yourself to differentiate things, huh? you can always just select this one and then change its color to something else. You see, because I'm using a very high, um, what do you call it, high resolution monitor, so my icons are appearing much smaller than they should. So what you, but what you can know is that you can just click over there and then change the colors of these nodes, okay? Changing the color means nothing to the functionality, it's just for the visual appeal of you, the designer. All right. You can even change the shape of those icons. The shape is controlled by the next block there. You see? Ah, you see? You're able to change the icons to suit your needs. You see? Another reason why I just love Houdini. But anyways, enough of my love. My honest love for the software. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Now, creating the shape, okay? Let's get in there. Then... We are going to, because we, we are not dealing with something which is related to the position of an, another object, but not only that, uh, not only that, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see what we can do. All right, no, let's just go ahead. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. First of all, we want to make sure that the radius of the subsequent uh, cylinder is exactly the same as the previous one, right? So how can we make sure of that? Well, we're going to come in here on the tube level, okay? Remember, if you're confused by the way things are overlapping each other, you can always either come there and tell it to hide other objects or tell it to ghost other objects or show all objects. That way all objects are clearly visible. But we'll keep it at ghost other objects for now, all right? So, how do we access the radius of the previous, of this tube central, and feed it into here? Well, we come in here, you see this radius there, okay? In fact, clearly, we have to play with the second one here, this one. To make sure that the two of them are exactly the same, we are going to come in here, and then we are going to access the following properties. We will do the following. Please wait. Let's go here to the parent node. I don't know why my object disappeared there. Okay. Yeah. If we come in here, you see that radius there. There we go. We're going to right click this radius and copy parameter. Then we come in here to this one and we're going to right click here. Paste relative references. There we go. That way, no matter what happens, we will always be referencing the other one's uh, dimensions. All right. Then, this one, we are going to make sure that it's just a percentage of the previous radius. So, in other words, let me just do this. We are, go we are going to make sure that this radius here is just a percentage of this one. Okay? So, we go in here. We're going to copy this parameter. And if you check well, if you check well before we proceed, let me just copy this and paste it here. Let me just, uh, oops. Let me just try and explain what's happening here. If you check what's happening, all that is happening is Udin is accessing the channel. A channel is like a property or a value, okay? And to get there, this is literally like Windows Explorer okay where it jumps out of the out of the layer in which it is which is this current geometry level it jumps out of there and then what's the next thing like like when you see these two dots it means it's literally really it completely gets out of this object node it it comes to the central node where all the objects are listed and then it accesses the tube central and of course there is a tube central and then once it arrives here it goes to find the object which is called which is called tube one and of course there is tube one and then it goes to access the radius number two and this there is the radius number two okay 
Yeah, that is in simple simple explanation. So we come back here. As we're saying, we're going to copy this parameter here. And then we're going to right click and paste the relative reference here. And then remember, we want to make it a percentage of the other one. So we're going to multiply by 0 0.8 or so. There we go. That gives us, of course, this look. All right. And then its height. Okay, its height. If you adjust the height right now, of course, you see what is happening. All right. Remember, the, this, the, the, the pivot point from which it's growing is controlled by the height divided by 2, like, we, like I showed you earlier on. All right. So now it's about positioning it above the other tube. Okay, let's come in here. To make it to make it so that it's rightly positioned above the other tube, we are going to right click here, just above the uh, the out node. We are going to right click here, manipulate again, and transform. Okay. Now, what, what are we going to do? We are going to access, remember this what, is this what I was telling you, that the out node represents the final look of anything, including its dimension. What we are going to do is we are going to come and borrow the, the actual size, the actual height of this object, according to what it looks at the end. So let's go back in. So under transform, and of course we are going to translate along the y-axis of course all right so in here we're going to do like we did before uh which is uh no in fact this one this this technique will be a bit different there is something in udini called bounding box okay bounding box if you think about it let me just raise my paint here yeah uh, let's say if this was a sphere all right what would be the bounding box? Well, the bounding box will be like the representation of the actual volume that this object occupies, like the rough surface area. So the bounding box will be something like this. Of course, I'm not so accurate because I'm using a mouse, but basically it will be a, a square which completely surrounds this object. All right. If you had, uh, let's say, uh, what, what other shape can you have? Okay, let's say if you had, if you had designed the letter A, okay? And then if I was to ask you, what will be the bounding box around the object, the letter A? Well, bounding box will literally be a box which completely surrounds the letter A, like that. So this will be the bounding box. Let me just make it in another, oops, oops, sorry, sorry. Yeah, but you get the idea. I was thinking to paint in another color, but basically, whatever is surrounding this will be the bounding box. Okay, so let's go back in. So now we are going to use the bounding box of the previous object. Okay, so we come in here. Remember, we are trying to manipulate it to move above the... Like, in the end, we should have it sitting right on the lid here. All right, so... We are going to go for B box, which is bounding box, all right? And then we open and close the brackets, okay? And then we we enter, we are now going to enter some values within this bounding box, okay? And then you will notice Houdini is very helpful in that it gives you hints as you type things, okay? Now, we have to specify which object, you see? The moment I've typed those two, uh, two um quotation marks, it gives us hints as to what to place in. So then it's going to look for which object to, to look for the bounding box dimension, and then which axis are we trying to access. Okay, so we're going to get in there, and then of course, like I told you, this works like Windows Explorer. You're going to type in dot dot forward slash. And when you do that, of course, you can see these are all the properties contained within this current object. You see, all these things are actually contained within this object, okay? Don't get uh, too carried away by the way things look. All right, so dot, dot, but because we know the object we're trying to access is outside of this geometry. So it's dot, dot, forward slash, another dot, dot, forward slash. Now you see, Udini presents us with the list of all the actual geometries in the entire scene. 
wonderful. And of course, you're looking for the tube central. Enter. And then, of course, you are greeted with, again, more options. Because now, it's literally accessing every property of the tube central object. Which is why I always insist, always name things properly. All right. Then, we are going to type capital letters. So, turn on caps lock on your keyboard. Out. There we go. You see what pops up? Out tube central. We, we, we select it press enter there we go okay so we are now accessing that object all right then what exactly are we looking for there you see again you are, you are given hints are we trying to find its maximum y position or its maximum y size so all these properties literally mean what they stand for like for instance x y mean will mean if you are trying to position this object at the bottom of the other in fact let's do that Try to enter the D underscore Y min. And by the way, this is very case sensitive. Okay, you have to type it as the way I'm doing, like capital letter D uh, and underscore and capital Y, capital M, capital I, capital N. Okay, and press enter. Now, do you see what has happened? Let's, let's switch to wireframe there. You see, our object has been moved to the very bottom of the this object here. And check this out. Huh? You see the name there? If at any time you go back to the other object and you rename this to new name and you come here to this object here, look what happens to the name. It automatically updates. Do you want me to keep on confessing my life for Dini? I'm sure you guys understand by now why I love it so much. <laughs> Very adaptable, you know? So we let's go back in and just uh, give it the name it had before. I was just showing you that you can rename things and Udini will remember what you've done. So this, is, this has placed this object at the bottom of the other, okay? So let's go back in there. So that is the Y minimum. So this is at the bottom. This is the, the lowest value on the Y axis. Now, Let's get in there and instead type in, oops, y max and close the bracket and enter. Boom. Our object now finds itself at the very top. Okay. I'm going to switch back to smooth wireframe shaded. There we go. This is what has happened now. And then guess what? What will happen now if you go back to original object? If you go back in here and you play, yeah, you select the object and check what happens when you play with the height. <laughs> it just pushes the other one perfectly. Wow. <laughs> this is why I love Houdini. Okay, let's get back in. All right. So now this object, clearly we made a mistake with the radius at the, of the other one. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to come back in here Oops, clearly we don't need to access radius number two. So it has to, let's rename, instead of red two, yeah, you see, Houdini is kind enough to reveal to us what is available. And of course we have to actually use red one. Okay, and enter, there we go. Now it's exactly the radius of the previous object. Great stuff, great, great stuff, okay? Then let's switch here to the, front view and activate its point yeah that way we can just see how far to pull it and just reduce the radius like that okay and uh, this one's radius yeah let's you, you you'll notice huh? if you hover the mouse over the the 0 0.8 that i have in my case these numbers if you hover the mouse and hold the mouse wheel you can you're able to play with the values nicely yeah that's how we want them wonderful okay and then what we're gonna do is for the sake of those guys who miss modeling the old don't worry Houdini can model just like 3d max so for for those people's sake we're going to create the top part here the conventional way all right so we come up here all right and then let's switch to 
let's switch to perspective mode all right for people who think uh, doing this doing things this way is just too complicated you know for their liking don't worry don't worry i've got you covered all right so what is this object of course it's a it's a tube basically so just create a tube again how do we do that we just right click primitive tube <laughs> sorry and then move this above of course that way we just know we just know what is what okay let's just put things here call this uh, tube top and let's get in okay so of course we are greeted with this tube right away all right so what we are going to do is we're going to remember i'm doing this for people who like to design the old way like the conventional way we are going to uh from here just select polygon that way this tube is converted into a polygon all right and then it needs of course to be kept so there is an option an option to end caps okay or leave it out for now i'll show you how dini is able to add the caps later on all right and then uh again its height because we want it to grow from the bottom so in other words if you if you increase the height right now of course you can see it's it grows from every direction so we we, we know by now that we just have to copy the height copy the parameter and then go to the axis which we want it to grow from which is that one and then right click and paste relative references and then divide by two yeah of course by now you we've become uh, geniuses when it comes to this all right so now of course we can estimate the radius that it needs to have so the bottom radius in fact the, both the top and the bottom have to be, have the same radius so copy that parameter and paste the relative reference there yeah that way they're always even there we go so when one shrinks yeah it updates the other okay and then uh, and then just to make sure that this thing is always sitting above the above the this last one here which we created and by the way let's come here to this one here yeah? yeah please rename it properly the out it should be out tube central lid okay remember naming is very important and then we are going to copy uh let's see let's copy all these properties here okay no need to reinvent the wheel when you've got access to all these tools so copy and then we come here let me just let me just again make note of that press uh, control plus C to copy all those. I should have gotten the tool to convert all my keystrokes into into things you can see on screen. You know, to copy all those nodes. Okay, then we come in here and then just right click and paste. And of course, you'll be greeted with a lot of exclamation marks, which is basically error. That is nothing to worry about. It's simply because Udini, like, it needs information to be fed into it. And right now, there's nothing coming through. So all we have to do is just redirect the flow. So we are trying to redirect like that. Wonderful. Okay. So you, you notice now, uh, if I was to hide uh, other objects, so it starts like that. And then we make it transparent and then we convert it of course into a polygon there's an exclamation mark and normally exclamation it means it's an error which Udin is willing to forgive you about okay i think what we're trying to do is convert the polygon into a polygon which you see that is the operation it's performing there all right so it's it's useless okay and then we made it the uh, we subdivided it and then we did that okay let's bring back up ghost other objects and of course, we want, or rather, let's make it uh, show all objects. Okay. And turn off the point for now. Yeah. We want it to be sitting right above this lid here, which we created. Okay. So to do that, of course, we go to the transform. And you see, yeah, we have to do this B boxing all over again. So bounding box, open and close the bracket. By the way, Udin is a lot of repetitive tasks, which 
as long as you keep repeating them, you don't take shortcuts, you will remember them, okay? It took me a while to figure it out, but uh, because I kept doing things the hard way of typing everything manually, all right? So our two brackets, again, we are greeted with these wonderful options, all right? Dot, dot, that is to access what is within this layer, and then dot, dot, to get out of here, and of course, the master node. And of course, we are looking for the central lid. And then once there, we're looking for out. There we go. Central lid. Perfect. And then comma. Oops. And then comma. And then we access, which access, which, what are we trying to access? We're trying to access the dimension of the Y maximum. In other words, the maximum height of this object. And we close the bracket and enter. There we go. It's official now. We are really on top of the world, okay? And again, you can see some discrepancies in that this one's radius should match that object's, okay? So no need to worry. We just come in here and the radius, we just gonna type CH for channel, open and close. We've done this before, this is just that here we're doing it the hard way, okay? Open the bracket, dot, dot, to access the properties and then dot dot to get out of this layer and then we are we are targeting of course uh this object here okay and the object we're looking for there is the tube one okay and we're looking for red there we go i think it's red one okay enter there we go and it snaps in snaps it perfectly into position okay exactly the way it has to be Great stuff. Okay. All right. Great stuff. Okay. So now, yeah, let's continue. I'm going to turn off the UV quick shade for now. That way I can show you guys how do you model this, this shape the hard way. Okay. So what you're going to do, we are going to turn off the subdivide for now. And then we go back to the tube and then we're going to increase the number of rows. You see that? Just make it... In fact, let's do this. No, let's, let's do things the hard way, okay? First of all, bring back the point node. We just want to check how tall must it be. So the height needs to be, let's see, according to the front view. Front view. Yeah, it needs to be, yeah, up to somewhere there. It's fine, okay? Uh, back to perspective, all right, turn on the point node to turn off the transparency. Then, before all of these things happen, in other words, right here, if you cannot find your object in the scene immediately, just press space bar and F to focus on it. Our object is there, but of course the problem is, of course, it's hiding behind other objects. So what you're going to do is just go here and hide other objects. There we go. That way we can focus on our object, okay? So we are going to model uh, this structure here the conventional way. All right. For Oops, sorry. For those people who doubt that Udini can do modeling. So we're going to select the selection mode and over here, You'll notice there are different ways to select anything, okay? There is the polygon mode, which is, of course, you see, these are individual polygons. All right. Then there's the edge mode. And, of course, just like in 3D Max, there is the edge mode, okay? And then, of course, there's the vertex mode. The, there are your vertices. And at any point, if you select a vertex, you see what happens. It automatically adds an edit mode for you to the point where you can adjust things. You see what's happening? So here's what's basically happening. Let me turn on the vertex points uh, display and the point number display. I'm going to zoom in here and show you what is really happening. As you can see, this is point number 10. And you see there, Udini picks up that you are actually manipulating a point called number 10. And all you are doing, like Houdini is recording everything, all you are doing is simply moving its trans translates. You see that? And you can see the number that is updating live. And you see, I can even manipulate it from there. 
You see that? So to the point where if I highlight this node and delete it, you see? You see how this window works perfectly in line with this one? To the point where whatever you're doing here is directly being reflected on this side. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. All right, so what we're going to do to the point where like if 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 i select the polygon mode and select polygon if you delete this if you select this polygon and you press delete you see odin odin automatically detects that you've blasted the polygon and it can even pick up which number of it you've you've blasted right now you've blasted number nine if you go and blast number two you see now it has taken away that one this is why I'm sure you can even repeat after me now, which is why I just love Houdini. Here you've blasted number 10, you see. And of course, you, if you don't want that, you can just delete that. And remember, if I undo, it's doing all of that. Meanwhile, if we jump straight here, and uh, let's go to the camera, you see. You see what happens. You can blast things all day long and still jump to these properties. You see, and turn them on and off whenever you feel like. You can turn on sub subdivide whenever you feel like and nothing is lost. You see, this is what we call proceduralism. That at any given time, you can go back. Basically, you can do time traveling. You can go back and change whatever and it updates subsequently. Okay, so let's go back here. Okay. And yeah, let, let's turn off the point display. All right, so what you're gonna do is we're going to select the age mode. I'm going to select age. Now, notice that no matter what you do normally, Udini is so kind to us. It always gives us this highlight with all the information available. Right now, we want to select the, uh, all these parallel edges. That way we, con we can create a ring, uh, connection around them, a ring of edges running um, perpendicular at 90 degrees. All right. So what is a quick way? If you select that one, if I press Control Shift A and select the, and in, in, in other words, let me do this. If you select that edge, right? And then if you hold Control Shift A, I think it was, it's, yeah, there we go. It shows you there. If you hold Control Shift A, it will be able to pick up all those edges running parallel to each other. So I'm going to press Control Shift A and the middle mouse button, MMB. Boom. Just like that. It has now picked up all the edges parallel to each other. Let me do that again. If I have something here, Control Shift A and then middle mouse button. Let me make note of that because it took me a while to understand it. So so uh select an edge then on the keyboard press control plus shift plus a plus middle mouse button Okay, so it's this entire combination to give us this selection. All right. Now, just like 3D Max, just like 3D Max, we are, we are now going to, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to press, from within this window here, I'm going to press the tab key. Okay, tab on the keyboard. Okay, let me note that here. Oops. Yeah, just beware, Udini takes uh, first place. In other words, like it sits above every other window, no matter what you use, what, which software you use, okay? So press tab, okay? So we press tab within this window here. Then what are we trying to access? We are trying to access polygon. And then you are looking for, you are looking for, let's see. Just wait, just wait. Now, what you're looking for is not in this one, okay? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to hold C. Let me note that again. Press C on the K. 
keyboard okay so what will happen is that it's going to launch oops ah my c has gone let me select it again yeah okay so with all those selected i'm gonna press c now you'll be greeted with this window it looks like uh, like an array of tools what and don't get scared okay it's simply another clever way of Houdini organizing things based on what you need to access what you're trying to find is under model so oops oops sorry 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 i'm gonna press it again c so ch ch check what i'm doing ah it's so fast it's so fast c you see move up to model you see that like make sure your your mouse your mouse turns into something that looks like a car's headlights i just love this man i think even uh, blender has this kind of uh, of menu system so we go under model and then we go upwards of course you're trying to access polygons we go upwards what are we trying to do we are trying to create a poly split i believe poly splits yeah you see what it, what happens it gives us this tool that can enable us to basically cut up these polygons okay but this is not exactly what i had in mind please please bear with me what i'm looking for is something else please wait please wait yeah there we go i found it okay so let's go back in here again select that Control shift a Control shift a and middle mouse and select those yeah we are looking for what is called age loop again if you type if you type tab you can type in age and then among them you'll find age loop or to know where it's kept when you press c and we went under model polygons you can see it's not uh, it's not listed among these so it's not there okay so what we had to go to do was press tab and go for polygons and age loop there it is age loop and then notice what happens there we go you see let me undo that you see you're able to 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 decide where to place this loop i'm going to do it again okay let's select the edge edge mode again press that edge Control shift a press that one and the middle mouse button and then again tab polygon edge loop this time let's go somewhere there and press enter okay you have to press enter to accept the command all right so this is how you can do the same functions we would have done in other softwares inside of houdini okay although of course i don't prefer doing this way i prefer doing it the procedural way uh, that houdini comes that houdini affords us okay then we are going to select all these we're going to switch to polygon mode pick all these polygons and then we're going to scale them down so select the scale button there's a scale okay you see it's the, let it's the letter e r is for rotation t is for translate so t r e you see so and of course we're going to scale it on there in the middle axis there we go and again everything you do you see udini recorded the age loop that we added it called it poly splits and then it adds an, another edit node, which of course takes care of the scaling of this object. Okay, because that's what needs to happen. Wonderful. I'm gonna press T, or you can just press the, the move button there, or you can press this one, of course, like we spoke about, the one which does everything. Okay. And I'm going to, oops, oops. Let's keep to one axis at a time. Yeah, let's play with the y-axis here. You see what I'm doing? There we go. I'm trying to create that base. Okay. All right. And then back to poly back to the selection mode. This time, let's go for... By the way, you'll notice... Ah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Let's go to vertex mode and then select the vertices there. And then, of course, they must rise up. Oops, it has to be back to vertex mode. 
and press T. There we go. Yeah, okay. And then let's jump to observe. What does it look like? In fact, let's call this, where it says edit one, I'm gonna call it edit move top vertices and enter, okay? That way we know what, it, what the function, the role is. And then click here, okay? Then bring back everything else. So go to other objects and let's see what have we done. Ah. <laughs> so you, I'm sure you, you guys can understand exactly what's happening here, right? So what is happening is that because we have subdivide, it has smoothened things out. If you turn it off, of course, you can see it gives us back the rough looking shape. All right. So this is what we've created. And let's say you realize, you know what, this shape is too smooth now. We need to add another, another edge loop there. No problem. All we have to do is just go back to, yeah, just uh, let's go back to this point here where we said edit, edit top vertices. And like I said, if you press control F, you can zoom in into an object and then let's hide other objects. Yeah. So clearly we need to add more subdivisions around this region here. So again, we are going to come in here and of course, this time let's use the edge node. Double click there, those edges and hold shift and double click those ones, okay? So you can clearly see, of course, which edges we've picked up. And then press C this time, model, polygons. We are looking for poly bevel, okay? This is the equivalent of chamfer in 3D Max, okay? So look for poly bevel, all right? And zoom in closer, and then of course it, it relies on a distance. If you increase the values too high, you see, of course, what happens. You see that? Wonderful. And then you can decide what kind of chamfering you get. Whether it's a solid, there we go, or a crease, or a round. You know, you've got so many options, and then you can, of course, increase the number of subdivisions between them. Great stuff. Okay. Then, the moment you now jump to the final node there, which, by the way, let's rename it to tube top. And let's show all objects by now. And zoom out. There we go. And if you're irritated by this point, you can just turn off the point display there. And there we go. Now you see that ultra sharp edge right there. Okay. That's exactly what we wanted to create. And of course, I had to demonstrate it this way for people who like to model things the hard way in Udini, okay? And then also, of course, we need to close the cap here on our object. How do you make a poly cap in Udini? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come here to where it was a poly bevel, control F and hide other objects. Yeah, then we come in here and uh, let's select the edge mode, double click this edge and press tab. So basically the C allows you quick access to the most common functions. And of course, if you can't find these common functions there like a smoothing or polyfill, then you know you have to use the tab mode instead, okay? In fact, let's press C, uh, oops, sorry. C, model, polygons, try polyfill. Look at that. <laughs> no wonder why this software is named in honor of the greatest magician of all time, Harry Udini. You know, that's just magic. Just like that, it has filled the cap. Just like that, you see. And then it's so intelligent to the point where you can even decide, like if you go to the, the node which follows, let me just see. You can decide uh, what kind of filling it does. This is wireframe. So do you see the kind of filling up it, it has done there? So you can decide whether it must fill it up with a single, it's a single polygon, you see? In which case it should just be a complete mesh like that, or triangles, or, ah, or even a triangle fan, you see? Or a quadrilateral fan. Like this software, you know, 
it's just something else okay yeah let's let's have it like that okay because if you check there's a little bulge at the very tip so what we do we are going to come here and then select the polygon mode and pick that very tip okay let's turn on now the this mode here there we go so that's very tip what we're gonna do you are going to move and notice how yeah no it's fine yeah we're going to move it and of course just a bit higher like that to give us that bulge at the very top and now when we rush to this level here you see what we get now you see that <laughs> of course it's that distorted the mesh a bit so let's just come back in here yeah all that needs to happen is just we just need more subdivisions along here so what we're going to do is we are going to select the edge mode again double click here of course you can see it's it's not, it, it's refusing to give us a complete loop of all the edges along here so no need to worry we're going to select this edge Control shift a and select that one and of course press tab and remember that history that i told you about remember this thing when i went to edit preferences and then we went to um to this setting here yeah total history length this basically tells Houdini what how long to remember the previous things you did if you right click now oops sorry if you tab press tab right now do you see there's an entire uh, line of things you just did recently to the point where you don't have to keep on typing them over and over Houdini will be able to let you access them from uh, from uh, uh, just selecting them so what you are looking for of course is the age loop okay you see and of course this age loop must run right at the tip there to give us a sharp edge and remember to press what enter wonderful okay and then what happens when we subdivide now there we go yeah now we have it <laughs> yeah now it's exactly the way it should be and of course let's move it where it should be and show all objects and now our object is sitting you know majestically at the very top right there exactly where it belongs okay then we are going to create the coil all right so let's quickly make a shape here uh, a primitive and the coil, this is where I will show you the aspect of Houdini, which involves uh, node and mathematics. So for those of you uh, mathematical gurus, oh, it's like it's not really intense mathematics. Like, like this is like one of the most basic kind of math mathematics you're about to see. But you'll see for yourself, all right? So what you're going to do is, if you observe the shape, these are nothing more than a little little circles just wrapped around each other but increasing in altitude all right so what you're going to do is just prepare it in advance so we're going to create a primitive and it's a circle so drop a circle there now because it sits together with a tube at the top let's just move it there just to keep the file organized okay let's call this of course coil and i'll enter the object and then if you hide all other objects yeah there we go this is how it looks at first and then it's a primitive we have to make it a a nerves curve and it has to be an open arc very important and please turn on the display points okay and by the way, by the way, let's quickly do this. Let's also, let's let lay flat along the Z axis or so. No, not like that. Along the Z X plane. Yeah. So if you were, if you had this as a primitive, yeah, it should sit like this on the ground. You see, completely flat. So, okay. So we make it again a nerves curve. All right. And of course, because it's an open arc, you see, it grows from zero to 360 degrees which is of course a complete revolution all right and then when you click on the revolution amount look look what can happen you see 
Oh my goodness, Houdini. You see, it can wind and wind along, al around itself. You see, so, so 360, of course, is the complete revolution. It, like it's a full circle, like the path of the, the Earth around the Sun. All right. Now, when you observe a coil, okay, let's say this was a coil, black surface. What needs to happen is that the points along some areas have to be higher than the others. That is literally all that needs to happen. In other words, if this is point zero, oof, it's, it's a mission to draw with this, pen, with this mouse. And this was one, two, three, four. What will happen is that the point, point number zero, will be, of course, the lowest possible point. And then as the numbers increase, of course, we expect the shape, you know, to get higher and higher, like a mountain. Okay, that is all that we are, we are, we are going to achieve using Odini. And again, like I said, this is one of those things I don't know how can one do such inside of 3D Max. All right, I will make it as simple as possible, as understandable as possible. All right, so first of all, we are going to activate the points, display point numbers. All right, now we can clearly see the points, okay? So right now, point zero, it's somewhere there. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, up until 12 or so. So the lowest point we'll expect should be there. And then as the shape turns you know we expect the other points to rise up all we are going to borrow is will be their point number okay so let me repeat again so basically all we're going to do is we're going to move this point's position on the y-axis based on their point numbers which we can clearly see with our own eyes okay so here's what we're going to do we are going to we're going to do it in in uh, in the following way we're going to right click and then attributes and then we're going, to, we're going to look for attribute expression. For those of you who have used After Effects, this is like expression. So literally, you are going to enter uh, some functions to perform a particular role. Okay. And then what will happen is that we are going to be basically playing around with the points, as you can see, very important. And then what are we doing? We are going to play, of course, with the position. Okay. And then what will happen is that the self means this is the current value of each position, of each point's position. Okay. Then we are going to enter plus. Like we want to add something on top of the existing positions. Okay. We are going to enter. Let's, let's, um, let's do the following. Is it? So what we're going to do is we're going to set, literally tap the, the word set, S-E-T. And then we're going to close and open the bracket. Remember, remember, in 3D, the position is driven by three axes, X, Y, and Z, right? So what will be the value on the X axis, we are gonna leave it alone. So we are gonna set it at zero, okay? And then space, okay? And then what's next? We are going to we are going to access the Y value, okay? For now, let's set it at zero. And then what will be the Z value? Also zero. Just press enter, okay? I just want to, I just wanted to see what will happen next. Then on the Y axis, let's come in here. Try to play with the numbers. You see what's happening? Let me just zoom out a bit. Look what happens when you play with the y-axis. You see? So this is what happens when you set, instead of 0, if you go for 0 0.6, you see, the whole shape moves up. You see? If, if you set it to minus 0 0.6, of course, the whole shape moves downwards so all this is good and all, of course all this is very understandable but of course what you're trying to do is base the movement on the point number because remember we can clearly see each point's number so what we're going to do is the following we are going to access uh let's see 
we are going to open and close the bracket here and call upon a variable called uh, pt num which is basically point number in Udini times let's say 0 0.1 and press enter oof a mistake there let's I think I forgot something there I think it should be at there we go look at this at what is happening right now all that is going on is that we are multiplying the each point number by a value of 0 0.1 so if you increase this number look what happens if you increase or decrease of course let me just zoom out of here this software is crazy you see what happens when this number is multiplied it just creates a coil which can go on forever right if you go back to the circle here and increase the revolutions you see do you see the kind of crazy shape you can come up with <laughs> you understand all right all that is manipulated by the point number let's set it back to 360 okay and then we come back in here set it to a much lower number maybe 0 0.0 one and of course let's press ctrl f when you do that of course now you've got the coil which is much shorter in height okay so this is the easy way to do it okay so all that happens is that we took the current value of itself hence the word self and then we set the values accordingly so zero on the x-axis we left it at zero the y-axis we multiply by the point number, and then of course the z-axis we, we, we set it alone at still zero. So this was one way to do it. You can maybe set it to maybe 0 0.04. Yeah, it's fine. So this was the easiest way to do it. Then I'm going to pack it aside and show you the hard way of doing it, because I know those of you watching, some of you are, are experts or advanced in Udini, you'll prefer this way. The following method involves much more thinking, but you'll see how it completely makes sense when you see what everything looks like, okay? We are going to call upon what you call, uh, by going to attributes, sorry, sorry, uh, please wait, we are going to go to, please wait, uh, yeah, go to utility, we are going to look for point vop, okay? Point verb literally means it's like a, it's like a, how can I put it for some, someone who's coming from 3D Max or so? It's like we are going to enter functions in here which will be working on points. Hence the word at the point verb. You see? All right. Hopefully I'm making sense. So right now, of course, you will notice that we are now, we've now skipped this one because, of course, remember, we've hooked up this one to this one. So, and we've activated that, that one so it's as it's now dis disregarding this one because everything it will do now will be driven by this one okay when you enter it you will notice some things which many of you might never have seen before and of course for those who have been using Odini for a while this will look way too familiar because it's in this node network that you can set up all kinds of crazy uh, functions okay our aim is to convert this function here into nodes all right okay so you'll notice here there is a p p means of course position all right so here is the input data and this is the output the p there's a position of course the p there is also the position remember we are trying to play with the position of the object cd is color in case we are working with the color, N is for normal. So I don't want to confuse you over all these things for now. Okay. So let's just focus on, on what we can do here. Okay. Remember, in fact, many of you will appreciate this method more because it completely makes sense. Remember, like we said in 3D, a position is controlled by the X, Y, and Z axis. All right. So in here, we have to convert this position and, and expose all those uh, all those axes individually. In other words, we want to expose what is the value of x, what is the value of y, and what is the value of z. To do that, we are going to right click and then convert. Okay. 
And then what we're looking for is we're going to convert vector to float. You see that? Why? Because if you've done mathematics, a position is a vector because it contains the x, y, and z axis. And hence, you see here, its output is made up, of course, of x, y, and, of course, z axis. You see, basically, this is the same thing we are trying to do here, that we were trying to do here, of exposing the x, which was 0, the y, and the z. All right. So let's get in. And remember here, remember here we decided what? The x and z axis must be left alone, right? So in the same way here, we are going to, we are going to, how can I put it? We are going to export back the z, the x and z untouched. The only thing we're going to manipulate will be the y axis. All right. So remember, we are going to use what the, we're going to manipulate what the, point number the pt num okay so let's get back in where is the point number well there it is okay that's why that's why that's why i was telling you guys you're gonna love Houdini, man <laughs> everything is accessible everything is manageable all right so there's our point number we are going to go to utility uh, sorry sorry convert and then we're going to convert it to, because a point number is, a, is an integer. That's why you see like point number zero, point number one, point number two. You don't get a point number 0 0.1 or 0 0.22. You understand? Huh? It's always an even number. So, but we need that number to be converted into a, into a, into a floating number. That way the height can be, you know, a height of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, not just an, an height of integers. All right. So... Uh, and let me just clarify for again I'm, I'm trying to take into account all my viewers okay including those who have not, never done mathematics in high school so an integer is an even number example one two three four okay and of course that is our point number all right but the height we want to make sure that we can even have a height of 1.2 or so. So, a, a, a float is a, an even number. Example, 1.01, .01, you know, 0 0.23, you know, 5.988 or whichever number so this is a floating number this is an integer all right so let's get back in so we are going to take our point number convert integer to float where is it there we go there we go okay and then of course we want to multiply it by number remember here we multiply, we multiply the point number by this value here. It's the same thing here. And where, where do we get the number? We can create a parameter. All right. So we just right-click utility parameter. There we go. Parameter. There it is. Okay. And then, of course, what will happen? We are going to multiply it to this number here is the same thing we're doing here that we did here the 0 0.04 is a parameter and the point number is there okay so we go back in there so we're going to call upon the multiplication and again another love of houdini if you right click there is math you see with all kinds of mathematical equations and there is multiply it's a cross multiply there we go okay and then what are we multiplying like, let me take you back here. I keep referencing this so that you guys can see the direct relation between the two. We are multiplying the point number by the parameter. So we get back in. So point number is coming here. It's going to be the first thing to be multiplied. And then, of course, our parameter is going to go right in. Okay? Then... If you want to see which values is being created right now, like what is the output of this multiplication, you can right click and select utility 
and there is a print node print like literally like a printer and output to 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 console so you can clearly see what is the value right now all right so that is just to show you what is happening so we've now multiplied the point number by the parameter okay then of course this parameter we will be able to access it when we get out of here you see there is a parameter that will be able to access outside of the node itself that is Houdini for you okay so now we do that and then what must happen of course we must then add because check this now remember here we added whatever was coming out of here to the existing position right so here too we we're gonna do the same so we are going to right click math and add there we go okay so what are we going to add we are going to add the remember this is the x position this is the y position and this is the z position so we are going to add the incoming y position to this one here which is being multiplied with the parameter wonderful and then out of all this remember we must still the position must still have an x y and z axis so we are going to go to we are going to going to revert it back to a vector so right click convert float to vector float to vector why because you see it also has three parameters okay let me just make my window here a bit wider especially for those of you it's the first time to see this all right so what's happening we are we are getting a position with we re, we released the the y-axis we've added a num a a parameter to it and then what happens that the final output of y must go back here on the y-axis make sure you don't mix them up okay it has to be like this and then of course remember remember the x and z won't be changed so that means x won't change remember so it goes from where it is to where it will be so no addition no multiplication will happen with it and then also z axis will also be untouched so z goes from there straight to there perfect and then of course the vector output goes to the position right there okay of course right now you'll see nothing all right when you go out of this node and observe what's about to happen now we are going to select uh, our object here remember this parameter here hold the mouse wheel and go with a tiny number at first and look what's happening do you see what's happening now isn't this wonderful <laughs> all this is coming from this entire equation let me let me recap it again for you so what happens is that we start with our positions okay which are x y and z right but remember we only want to adjust the height which is controlled by the y axis and then that height must be multiplied there by each point's number which is why the lowest point which is zero which is at the bottom and the highest point of course is at the tip because it's when you multiply the high number by a certain number of course it's bound to have the highest value so we had to convert it into a flow that way we can have uh, values which are more dynamic like 0 0.1 0 0.2 after we multiply that value we found the answer and then we add it to the existing height position and then the final output was converted back into a, a vector because that's what the position is it contains x y and z and then the combined output is fed back into the into p which is the position if you take the same output check this out eh? if you take the same output and pump it into cd you see what you get you get a rainbow <laughs> you see that so basically this is a direct explanation of exactly what is happening on this object isn't this wonderful <laughs> okay now our coil even looks like a rainbow all right so now let's bring uh, back show all objects all right yeah of course if you think our object now is too big let's just switch to wireframe here okay if you think it's too big you just go back to the circles radius let's do this quickly 
select the okay its radius of course must be based on this tips uh, radius okay so to make life easier we're just gonna go to the tube top oops you see when you've got the point number display on it looks crazy because of all this data and of course at least we know what Udini can do with all this data all right let's turn this off we are going to borrow this object uh, radius yeah this one here there we go copy its radius copy parameter that way if this object grows it will also increase the growth of the coil okay we go back here paste relative references there we go it has already adjusted itself and of course it has to be the same across so copy parameter and paste relative references there we go okay and then of course uh okay this one will uh yeah we'll move it by hand it's fine the coil uh it's positioned along the y-axis there we go great stuff let's just turn on the smooth wire shaded all right let's hide the reference plane for now yeah you can see of course how it's grabbing itself around there and then of course that's be adjusted so it can be just be times 0 0.8 maybe so that way it's just 80 percent of the original shape great stuff okay and then we are going to use uh yeah, yeah let's bring up this the previous options of uh, uv mapping and so forth all these uh, and conversion as well okay control c let's go back in there and place them in here let's see what we get so it starts like that okay 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 and then let's just do this let's let's because we can't see what it is like we will not be able to render this you have to convert it into something we have to use a, what we call a poly wire so just right click under the convert and then we go to polygon uh no no sorry let's do it just after the point vop right click polygon it's either you can use wireframe or poly wire okay let's go here and uh oh no, no, no. We have to convert it first. Let me see. Right click. Yeah. You see, it's still available there. There's poly wire. There we go. There we go. You see. Yeah. Now, of course, it completely surrounds the mesh. And remember, we can go back at any time and readjust these parameters. Like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, polywire, of course, has options such as divisions. So if you increase the number of divisions, you see, you get a smoother shape. Wonderful. Yeah, like that. Okay. But of course, it's all good. But of course, there's only one of them. All right. And by the way, if you don't want to see this rainbow color, if it's irritating you, don't, don't need to worry. You can just go in the point of and then just select that link between the output and the CD, which represents color and delete that way the rainbow goes away all right for some reason if you don't like the rainbow okay I, I i like it though let me just bring it back okay all right and then what we're gonna do is we need of course a mountain of these to stack up all the way to the top to do that we are going to use the trick uh which 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 you didn't realize on so many times which is to copy uh, repetitively to do that now we are going to right click and then go to utility select what we call copy stamp okay it's what udini does to replicate things you can think of it like the array the array uh, tool in in 3d max okay so we come in here let me hide let me hide everything else okay so we've got our tool here our object if you go ahead and increase the number of copies, you'll think nothing is happening, right? But if you dare to increase the translate, oops, let me just be out of here. Uh, is it changing anything? Oh, the number of copies is still one. So if you increase the number, hopefully this should give us something. Ah, there we go. Let me set it back to what it was, a zero. 
Let me go back in again. Sometimes you have to be gentle. So first, you increase the number of copies that you want. And then you gently increase. There we go. You see that? <laughs> now you're having as many calls as possible. But of course, I know some of you are asking, they are not meeting each other. No need to worry. How do you make sure that this coil is complete throughout? Okay? Well, here's what you're going to do. All right? We are going to come in here and instead of translating like this by guesswork, we are going to change the, scale, the, the translation based on the bounding box of this coil. And of course, the bounding box literally means that what is the max, what it will be the, like if you were to wrap a box around this coil, what will be the height and what will be the, you know, the width to surround it completely. So to do that, we are going to come here right after the, um, after the point VOP, we are going to right click and add a utility null. Null. There we go. Why? Because, of course, this represents the coil once it has been created without all these modifications, all right? We're going to call it out coil uh, uh, original, okay? Because we're going to use it now, now. Then, let's actually move the, the copy node to be here. Look at that. Check what I'm doing. I'm moving it right there. There we go. Forcing it to take that place. Okay. Don't be afraid to do that. Yeah. And of course, we get this beautiful rainbow of, of things. All right. Now, enough of the beauty. Now, we are going to base the copies based on the height of the original. Okay. So, the translate here will be based on the B box, bounding box. We've done it before. That's why I said within is a lot of repetitive tasks. Okay. And then we get in there, dot, dot. This time we're not getting out of this object. We are staying in here. Dot, dot, forward arrow. And then we're, co of course, we're going to type out. There we go. Out coil original, which is the object right there. And then what are we looking for? D dimension. Let's try Y size. Enter. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, We've completed our loop. Look at that. They meet precisely. Why? Because this value here is exactly the height at which the original object finishes. Basically, what you're telling it to do is simply, whichever coils which follow, put it right above the maximum height or maximum size along the y-axis of the previous one. All right? And then we then have the freedom to convert it to a polygon and you see this is then what you end up getting you see if you want to make sure that these coils do indeed meet up what you can attempt to do i don't know if this will work let's see right after the copy let's try and go to nerves with in fact let's do this let's display uh, point number and oh, no, that won't help that won't help okay right after copy if you go ahead you uh, nerves try join there we go do you see what has happened check this this is before this is after you see it completely blows out what was connecting them between the the, the, the two joints you see that it joins them and then yeah you, there's an option of course to connect uh, last ends, there's also an option to multiply. I don't know what does that one do. I think, yeah, the multiply prevents this buckling around the edges. You see, yeah, it, make, it keeps it super smooth. And then now, if you now use the poly wire, there we go. The seams between them is completely gone. You know, our coils are now perfect. <laughs> and remember, when you come out of here, <laughs> when you come out of here, if you, sorry, 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 if you go, oh yeah, it, I think it's time to bring up our ghost, oops, ghost other objects, yeah. When you're here now, you're able to go to the number of copies and reduce them. Oh my goodness, Houdini. <laughs> okay, and then of course, you then can go to the point VOP and the parameter, reduce them a bit, you know trying to match the photograph 
Yeah, there are not that many anyways. Yeah, and you just gently bring them up. And of course, clearly it needs more copies. So you just come in here and increase the number. There we go. Yeah, I think it finishes there. That's where it wrote end. Yeah, perfect. Wonderful. Okay. And when we, when we get out of here, now you can see, of course, in fact, let's say show all objects. Yeah. This is your lid. Let's turn off the point. That way we see the full object. Yeah. Wonderful. So that means, of course, we are left with just this shape and, of course, the bottom. All right. Let's see. So now we are finally going to focus on this curvature here. All right. I left the easiest part for last <laughs> because my, th my theory is always tackle the hardest thing first. You know, the easy part you can always cover, you know, in record time, you know, because I've had clients who uh, have been frustrated that I've, I'm taking too long to update them and so forth. And I kept insisting to them, you know what, it's going to take me so much longer to deliver the hard part to the point where that uh, I'd rather meet your deadline knowing that the most difficult parts have been covered, you see. But ah, to each their own, eh? I bet we all have uh, different workflows, I guess. All right. So uh, our coil, I'm just going to just increase the the thickness a bit. Yeah, just to make them a bit like that. All right. And yeah, I'll just move them. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Okay. All right. So let's continue. And yeah, so this curvature here, what we need to do, again, this will be another aspect of Houdini I want to show you. Like, how do you model uh, nerves or curves? Okay. So what we have to focus on is its main structure, which is nothing more than doing that. Okay. The most important thing is that this point, uh, let me see, uh, which one would it be? I would say, um, let's see. Ah, we'll see, we'll see. But I think there's because the, there's a there's a tool we're gonna use called the revolve, and it needs the beginning point to be quite accurate. So I think the closing point here should really be at zero units. You'll see what I mean by that. So basically, our focus should be on creating this shape here. Yeah. So this is a very important point that it has to really to sit right in the center of the scene okay so let's we have to switch to the front view like you have to or else you will not be drawing uh something quite accurate that's that that much i can warn you about all right and then we're going to ghost other objects and let's drop in a primitive uh a box or anything you, you'll notice not every object is accessible from uh, from the primitive menu like you can see it doesn't have the the option to draw lines and curves okay so that's why i just said you know what let's just drop a box in there okay let's call it a curvature and let's get in and just get rid of the existing shape there all right then then what we have to do is it's gonna be a bit tricky but let's see let's see yeah one thing for sure we do know the points have to meet at zero units okay so we are going to activate the snapping option in which case of course is a grid snapping that way whatever we draw will be snapping let me just make this window bigger whatever we draw will be snapping onto these grid lines okay if your grids if your grids are too small i think you can just come up here you see where it says display uh, preferences plane right click and select reference preferences try and see okay for instance if you set it to one by one i wonder what it does uh no let me see no it doesn't do anything there okay you come in here and then press d 
and then we go to uh, grid yeah and then you will notice there there's grid spacing i i hope it's here that it can be changed and if you set it to 0 0.1 oh, sorry 0 0.1 Yes, so it's controlled within here. So I have set mine to 0 0.001. Okay, that way they're so small. That way they're, you know, I have much more room to maneuver. So you go to, you press D on the keyboard and then you go to uh, grid on the grid tab. All right. Then let's see. Yeah, luckily it's it's brightness adjusts itself as you zoom out okay so basically we are looking for this whole shape here all right let's see what can be done mm, let's see it may have to be done in two separate stages okay all right now let, let's i think let's do it in two separate stages all right, so the first thing we're gonna draw is just this, just that curvature, which comes all the way there, okay? Like I kept saying, please remember to draw from the very center of the scene. Make sure the grid snapping is turned on. So we're going to right click and then go for primitive and we're looking for curve, curve, okay? And this one is a bit tricky to draw. What needs to happen is that once you've once you've created it there, you then have to come in here and then press enter. That way you can see that cross so that you can begin to draw. Okay? This I have to let me just see, let me just see something here. Let me see something. In fact, uh, I think I've, active, I've managed to find out to activate the keystroke of function on the keyboard, on the recording rather. So I'm going to delete my curve uh, node there and just edit again. Hopefully it's capturing everything now. So what needs to happen is that, again, remember, Udin is always guiding you down with the, with the tooltips down there. So you select your node and then you move to the viewport and then you press enter. And then you'll notice how every time you reach a grid corner, it turns into this, uh, into this beautiful uh, glowing, uh, uh, like, uh, sorry, it snaps onto the corners, okay? All right, so we are going to go from the center. Remember, what, we are, what are we doing now? First, we are drawing this shape only. But the aim is that it's, the starting point must be at zero units on, the, on, the, on all axes, so which is there, okay? So you start there, and of course this shape bulges a bit outwards, okay? Never, never mind if you are getting it a bit rough looking, it can always be adjusted later on. All right, something like that, and then press enter. You press enter when, of course, you conclude your design, all right? So that is the first, oops, sorry about that, that is the first shape there. We're going to call this curvature, uh, curvature uh, top. Let's uh, drop it there and then call this one curvature bottom. So this one will be this part here, this part. Okay. So where, where, where must we draw it from? Of course, you must draw it from this point here because like i insist when we use the revolve if this thing is not uh, exactly at zero units on all axis you'll have a problem that it will leave a gap which will remain open and you'll you'll struggle to to close it off okay so we get in here and we don't need the existing shape there just delete it and we're going to make our own so again primitive curve or you can just select the curve from there is the same thing and of course we come in here oops and uh, yeah so again oh, I think I, I did something wrong there let me just delete that curve yeah sorry I should not have done that so sometimes you have to press enter to activate the cross sometimes it doesn't work so just beware no matter what you do uh, you must always, the, your mouse cursor must change, must turn into a cross. That way you know that indeed you are in the drawing mode. Okay? So like we said, oops, our object will start from there. 
right at the center of the seam and of course it will then bulge outwards not much but yeah something like that I believe should be fine something like that and then like that and then like that enter as well perfect okay then let's just observe what we've done is this really no 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 uh, we huh? uh, no 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 a mistake mistakes were made sorry about that I thought this was really the very center or oh, no it's because our grid snapping is so like I've subdivided my 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 viewport so many times that's why I'm, I'm, I ended up snapping onto the wrong objects okay but it's not the end of the world we can still fix it so we are going to right click on our object and then manipulate and edit okay that way we can be able to adjust our object we're going to select our object here and of course just like a polygon where you have polygons for a curve we've got points so there's our point and yeah very important of course we are going to move it to there we go so at least we're able to snap it right there there we go now that works okay do the same for the top one okay uh it's either you can do that there or you can directly come here and select that point and move it you see again automatically Udini gives you an edit node and there we go and snap it right there okay perfect then let's switch to perspective mode do you see there we go do you see why i kept insisting you have to draw this right in the middle of the scene and in the front viewport unless unless whatever you were drawing you know it's 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 profile had to be accurate from the top view or the right view but we know that from the front view this is what the light bulb the light bulb looks like looks like that's why we had to rush to the to the front view all right so once we've done that of course it doesn't look smooth so we have to refine this shape so we're going to right click and then uh, sorry not right click go to the curve node where it says polygon try to turn it into nerves and just like that now it's a perfect nerve okay it's, i know it sounds like it's a perfect nerd excuse the pun okay so we do the same here and select the curve and polygon and nerves there we go again it's also a perfect nerb not the perfect nerd <laughs> english all right so now of course time to pull off the magic how do we go from that profile into this complete shape okay time to bring out of course yet another magic trick from udini to do that so which one are we working on of course let's start with the top one we are going to enter it and then we right click and we go to in fact before we do that what needs to happen is that we have to borrow these points at the bottom of this shape here okay like that is basically what needs to happen all right so let me just activate uh, the smooth mode here yeah so basically we have to come around and borrow the points at the bottom of the structure that way they can be used as a guideline for our mesh over here okay so here's how we're going to do that we are going to let's see mm, so at the bottom sorry the top here yeah we are going to import this object here into this one another very crazy tool about Udini. so right click and import object merge object merge so right click import object merge okay what are we merging well there is object so click there and then of course it gives us these options and this object i believe of course is our central lead and we are trying to bring in the out central there we go what you're looking at right now is the imported object okay all right 
like to the point where if you, you you can even see what it's calling itself you see again you see why i kept insisting you have to create that null at the bottom of the object that way it can be called upon whenever needed because here we don't care what happens in between here we are really literally getting the final output of our mesh okay so once we are in here and if you bring in a manipulate and a transform node i just want to show you what what is really happening here if you're going to transform this you see what's happening we are literally borrowing that object and making use of it okay wonderful then because remember we only need those polygons at the bottom right let's what we're going to do is we're going to right click and then nubs and sorry sorry polygon because it's not the nubs it's a polygon we are looking for clip clip okay clip like the way it says is going to clip an object based on the specifications that you have all right it's got an axis that it's going to clip onto and of course it's got the distance like how, how much to clip and of course we are trying to clip this object or to cut it up along the y axis so likely it's already set at a value of one along the y axis because this is the x axis this is the z axis that is y so you see what is happening as you adjust the clipping values and then of course you can specify what to clip do you want to do you, what do you want to keep we want to keep the objects below so now you see what's happening so let me just hide other objects there we go so you see this is what is happening with the clipper you see it's only leaving us what we have at the bottom there all right that's what we need okay then let me see okay please wait please wait I wa i'm wondering whether the clip should do the work or the curve okay let's put this aside let's load a, a nerves curve okay then let's press ctrl f here try and see no that doesn't do anything let me see should this work it doesn't do anything i'm trying to see which one will give us what we need please wait uh, not there no they don't seem to be doing no nah, they don't it doesn't seem to be doing the the task so instead yeah we're going to rely on our clip here all right or no no no. i have a better idea instead of the clipping okay how about right click and then manipulate and delete okay that way we'll delete based on a particular value okay then on for the deletion or ah, even better even better let's just come in here let's just come in here and select um, the edge node or the vertex node it's fine let's switch to the front view and just highlight only the bottom vertices and then press delete on the keyboard okay you see that of course that clears out all the bottom vertices and then we are going to say uh delete non-selected there we go that way it only leaves us of course the bottom points okay there we go if you turn on the point display there we go we, of course we only have the points to look at now okay let me use that remember if you can't see the point you just press d and then you go for guides and then point marker display and then you can control how much to display of course if this is still too small you can go for let's say 15 you see that way you can be able to see your points properly and if the interface is too bright for you to see you just go to edit and um, color settings color scheme you can choose with any light and of course you'll see what you'll get all right okay yeah then it will give you those those options all right okay let's continue so we are going to use these points here to spread our 
our shape here, our curvature here. So to do that, let's organize these things the following way. Let's put these things side by side. We are going to use the same copy node that we used earlier. All right. So we're going to right click, utility and copy stamp. Copy stamp. There we go. Okay. And then of course, it depends on two things. What are you copying and then what are you, where are you copying it to? So the object you are copying is on the right on the left hand side. Where we are copying it to is on the sorry, on the it's what we are copying is on the left hand side, and then where we are copying to is on the right hand side. So we hook them up like that and activate the copy. And of course, you'll be greeted with this kind of look. Looks interesting, but of course, it's not the shape that we want. That is because if you go into this object here. The way in which the normals uh, are, are laid out is not, uh, how can I put it, is not optimal, I think, okay? Because if you observe this, check what is really happening. It's like all they're doing is just being sprayed around the circle, but then keeping, the object is keeping its, uh, its direction. We don't want that. We have to fix the way in which the normals on this structure uh, are laid out okay so to do that we are going to turn on this option here which says display normal you see that display normals all right and then what you are going to do is the following and so get yourself subscribed to my youtube channel to my facebook page to my twitter to my instagram because i'll be keeping all those platforms regularly regularly updated uh, as, as content comes through and so forth so that you, you guys can know what I'm busy with which kind of hardware I'm working on or which kind of so project I'm working on that of course you also get to feel like you know what there's another artist out there who is also you know active alright